Good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my cabin this morning. We're actually at Beaver Creek. This is my outpost. I'm finally getting back here to uh, do the finishing touches on it before we put the roof on it. It's still hot. It's still humid, but it's a little better than it was last week. So I'm gonna, I got to uh, finish up around the windows, finish up the door, and I've got to trim the roof. So I figured I'd bring you guys along. I got a couple of tips I want to show you before I get out of here today around the door. Uh, what I have done to it. Uh, I have uh, tripled up and doubled up and everything else to protect the lumber that's around the door from rain. and Because that's where these cabins rot out. So that's why I want to take you over and show you the different steps that I did to the uh, base of the door before I put in my door stool. The first thing that I did was I, I used an oil and kerosene, uh, a wood preservative, and then I coated my 6x6 six six with that. And then on top of that, I, I laid in uh, a piece of flashing. You could, maybe you can see that behind me. You can see the tin flashing. I'll bring you over and give you a close-up anyways. So I oiled my, my wood underneath. I oiled uh, uh, the floor deck itself and every, everything in that corner, as well as up 2 or 3 inches on each one of the corner posts that makes up the door. The corner posts are 4x4 four four hemlock, but because of the rain that will hit the front of the building and run down, I wanted to make sure to preserve the bottoms of those 4x4s four for long term as well. So I oiled it, put the tin flashing on, and then I, on the very top of the tin, on all the edges, I put on some ice and water shield. And that seals absolutely everything. It goes inside of the cabin about four inches. So that's like a three layer protection system around the base of my door before I build the door. And the door is what we'll be building next. Here's what I wanted to show you. The six by six runs in here. We got the floor joist, then we got the six by six. The six by six and the floor joist I coated with kerosene and motor oil, six, six by six, floor joist, and then the floor. After coating it with motor oil, I put this flashing on that runs all the way up here and folds over and runs by over here so it's behind the wall boards. And then right here, this is ice and water shield that I tacked on over my flashing. So now when water comes down here, it'll hit, run, and keep right on running right down to the ground. To me, this is the best way to finish these doors off because this is the weak link in a cabin as far as rot goes. I'm going to build the door in my shop, so I'll bring you in there to see how I build the door. It's much cheaper to build the door out of, out of wood than it is to purchase one. But more than that, I don't want to put a steel door on this building because to me the steel door on, a, on an outpost like this or on a log cabin just looks out of place. That's, I'm not knocking you if that's what you've done, it's just for me, it, it's, not, it's not the feel that I want to go for. So I'll be building the door out of 2x6 tongue and groove and I have been building those doors for... Boy, every timber frame I ever built has got one of my uh, 2x6 tongue and groove doors in it. This being an outpost for fishing, trapping, and hunting, and everything in between, I really feel that these uh, tongue and groove doors uh, fit the bill a lot better for me anyways. So, But anyways, today I've got to trim the roof. I'm going to set the camera up and you can watch how I do that. I, all I do is run the boards up there full length, let them hang out over the edge a little bit, and then I chalk a line, and then I run up that line with a skill saw, and that way I end up with a lot better edge for my roof edge, as well as it's just a lot easier on the day of nailing it down. So, <laughs> so that's, a, uh, that's the whole story behind why I've got to trim the roof, and today I'll be measuring the roof for my steel roofing, and getting that ordered and with any luck be picking that up uh, sometime next week so 
that's my plan on the roof and get this place buttoned up. Uh, the windows will be coming in next trip. So I, I plan on uh, getting everything prepped and ready for the windows. And then next trip I will be hauling the windows in and getting those installed. And then, well, I, I, my plan maybe is to even go to the lumberyard tomorrow and purchase the materials for the door so I can get the door built. And once the windows and doors is on the windows, this place is usable. So that's, uh, that's uh, you know, the interior I'll work on over the winter. Uh, I'll get a bed in it real quick and get the wood stove in it real quick. But then we'll be using this, this building come deer season. It coming in here this morning. Now I haven't been here for a week because of the humidity and the high temperatures. The deer have uh, really taken to using my trail into the cabin uh, roughly about 50 feet behind the cabin I had all kinds of deer track so that's uh, that's the <laughs> that's the Beaver Creek in a nutshell this week but let's uh, move on and and uh, see what we can get into for trouble today <laughs> well I'm gonna have to end today's video at uh, Beaver Creek cabin here in the shop Actually, it's the next day. I worked my way back home yesterday. Uh, while I was out at the shop, some of my footage is missing from this video, so I, I have to apologize for that. I had set the camera up so I could videotape the eaves of the roof getting trimmed. And I thought I had it. I got home here, started to do my editing, and obviously the camera wasn't recording, so... I do apologize for that because I was looking forward to sharing that with you. But that's just the way it goes when you're being the carpenter, builder, and a videographer all in one thing uh, in order to get these videos down. But anyways, I wanted to end it with uh, I trimmed the roof. And then after shortly after getting a roof trimmed and a few uh, other pieces put on, I could see the whole left side of the sky coming in. Because you can see for quite a ways uh, from the cabin, and it was dark as the ace of spades. And within us, so I said, I better close up this camera. So I closed up the camera, uh, put it into my day sack, and I, I carry a garbage bag with me to put my day bag in. And wrap that all up, and I no more got that done, and then it's just started to rain. So the roof still isn't on, but what I did was I took an old tarp brought it inside the building, stretched it out, sat in there for a while, just kind of waiting out the storm. And after that, then I think it, it took an hour or so for the storm to go by. And once that was by, then it was time to pack it in and go home. Actually, it wasn't quite, I didn't really do that. I had my utility trail. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've mentioned this or not in these videos. But the utility trailer that I've been hauling my uh, lumber in from the from the pickup with, uh, last trip in with my grandson, we hauled in all of the roof boards, and the very last trip of that of that day, uh, I broke the tongue off the trailer, so I chained that tongue up yesterday, took the trailer apart, took off all the wood, so it'd be easier to haul out of there as well as load onto my my utility trailer that I haul the six wheeler back and forth with. So I dropped off that utility trailer, the broken one, at the welding shop. Told him my dilemma and told him I needed it fairly quick. And he said, how's tomorrow sound? So this afternoon I'm headed back to the welding shop to pick it up. And it should be all finished. He's going to weld on the tongue. Uh, strengthen it up a little bit, add some more steel pieces to it so I can have my utility trailer back because the next thing I need to haul in is uh, steel roofing. So we're going to get that ordered by getting the roof trimmed. I could uh, figure out what I needed for steel roofing. I think I mentioned this in another video, but the I have it cut at an Amish store. The uh, <laughs> same thing I... Oh shoot, I had the same thing the other day in that live stream. Couldn't remember the town. <laughs> Smyrna. Think I got it right. Smyrna. Uh, if I don't, oh well. 
Anyways, the, the Amish people will cut the roofing to lengths, and I need 166 and a half inches. So they'll they'll cut that to length for me, and I won't have to do any cutting once I get back here to the uh, to the campsite with it. So I'll haul it in on that trailer, pass it up on the roof, and screw her down. And the other thing, the other thing I want to show you today, I got another show and tell thing for you. As most of you know, I just finished a uh, trapping uh, class, and I graduated from that. It was more. It was more than what I was expecting, but I did graduate from it. And as my graduation present, I got me a new hat. <laughs> now I gotta tell you, my wife doesn't like it at all. But this is a felt hat. Now I, I don't know if they're just in Maine or what, but this is a crushable felt hat. And when I was a kid, this was the hat to own. Let me tell you. And I never bought one for myself because they're, they're a little bit on the pricey side. Uh, this hat is, is $36. And it's not much of a hat. Let me just see. It's still got the price tag on it. <laughs> I feel like that old woman on Hee Haw. <laughs> but anyways, a lot of you probably won't know that. But I think her name was Minnie Pearl. But anyways, I splurged after graduating the uh, trapping uh, class day. And I was in the right store at the right time, and they had my size, and it was on the shelf. So I splurged and, and got myself a new hunting hat. So, <laughs> like I said, the wife doesn't like it much, but I sure do. And once we get into the cooler weather, I can get back into my regular flannel shirts, too. Uh, probably about October it'll be time to be back in my flannel shirt. I always wear green. My green hat will match my green shirt. I'm a happy camper. So this will wrap this video up on my trip out to the uh, Beaver Creek cabin. And like I said, once the roofing is here, we'll head back out. I do have the windows to start putting in. The doors are next. Uh, door were. And I'll be building that door right here in the shop. And I've got some tips on how to build that door. And we will, we will go from there. The thing that I'm going to do on this, because this is an outpost. And it is a trapper's cabin. Uh, I purchased these right here, uh, Victor Traps. They, I purchased them off eBay for $5 a piece. They're nothing fancy here. It's, it's, just a, it's just a one spring trap. They say it's vintage, it still works, everything's good on it. But what I'm going to do with this trap is I, there's already one hole, but I'm going to drill another hole so that there's two of them. And these are going to be my uh, door handles. One on the inside and one on the outside. Uh, the chain will just come up alongside and just hang there somewhere. But it, it's, it's, uh, this is going to be my, uh, my door handle for the door. So I thought you might find that kind of interesting. Uh, you can find a good use for these for these old handles when you're working on your own cabin. They will make great decoration as well as in my case they're going to be functional. So, <laughs> But anyways I will see you in the next video. Throw me a bone. Subscribe. So go check out my Patreon channel uh, where I am uh, launching new videos every Monday at 6 a.m. And I will see you next week.